visual effects. When you talk about visual effects, uh, you have to separate it from special effects. Uh, special effects, that is things that you do in front of the camera while you are shooting, like uh, creating rain, uh, explosions, uh, fog, and so on. That is special effects. And visual effects, that is what you add in post. Um, uh, computer graphics, uh, compositing, and so on. And I'm going to talk about specifically about uh, making uh, digital visual effects uh, look as good as possible. Uh, some very basic uh, rules. Uh, if you look at a typical Hollywood um, action movie or, or science fiction movie or something like that, usually the visual effects are are perfect. They are totally photorealistic and completely convincing. And uh, achieving that level of uh, photorealism is very, very difficult. It takes lots of skills, it takes the right tools, and it takes lots of time. So if you start to experiment yourself with uh, digital visual effects, uh, uh, real, you, you, you have to realize that it will take lots of time to get it right. Uh, it is quite easy to, to, uh, to go much of the way to make it quite, uh, to make it look quite okay. And then to make it look look uh, almost perfect. That takes a lot of time. And going the last mile, so to speak, or the last <laughs> percentage, and making it 100% perfect, making it completely photorealistic, that takes very much time. But I will go through some very basic uh, uh, rules to make it a little bit easier. There are a couple of things that can make it easier to make the effects work good. And these are quite pragmatic actually, but uh, if you think of it, it is very often used in, in professional movies also. Uh, darkness. Uh, most of uh, many visual effect heavy movies are actually taking place in darkness. Uh, horror movies, uh, science fiction movies, they're actually quite dark. And of course, if it is dark, it is easier to make the visual effect look good because you don't see as much. Uh, if you're going to make a photorealistic uh, dinosaur or a photorealistic human, it is much more difficult to make it good if it is in broad daylight or sunlight. And it's much easier to make it uh, good in, uh, in darkness or, or dark. Fast editing that you cut quickly uh, can hide a lot of uh, not that very good effects. And that is also what you see often in action movies and in horrors and horror movies and so on. So the, uh, the audience doesn't have time to look at the images that very long. One thing that makes it much more easy is to have the camera locked down or on a, on a tripod. Because if you, for example, are going to add stuff in, in, the, in the shot, then if the camera is still, you can just add stuff and they are positioned where they are. But if the camera moves, uh, when you are shooting, then of course the things that you add, the computer graphics or whatever, have to follow the emotion. So then you have to track, you have to motion track. And that can be quite time consuming to get it right. So, uh, so have the camera uh, locked down. If you want to uh, add something in compositing, but you want the camera to be uh, handheld. You can actually shoot uh, with the camera on a tripod, locked down, and then in post-production, 
in, in compositing, you can add whatever you want to add to the image, uh, some monster or, or whatever. And then when the compositing is, is completed, then you can add a fake camera shake to simulate the, the handshake of a handheld camera. And that can be very convincing. Uh, Real-world reference is uh, very often used to get uh, things looking good. Uh, uh, if you are going to do a, a computer animated, a, a 3D animated dinosaur, for example, the uh, modelers and the animators, they are going to the zoo and watching uh, elephants or rhinoceros or other big animals that looks like a dinosaur. That is just one example, but using real-world uh, references makes it much more easy. And also, uh, when you do the textures to the 3D models, using real-world photographs uh, as a base makes it much more easy. If you, for example, want to have a surface on a 3D model that is a little bit uh, rusty, for example, the easiest way is, of course, to go out into reality and take a photograph of a rusty surface and edit that one in Photoshop and use it as a texture. In compositing, uh, compositing is when you put all layers of the image together in, into one final image. Uh, using lots of layers um, make it more easy to control every aspect of the, uh, of the image. Uh, let's say that I have built a 3D model of uh, a spaceship, for example. When I render out this 3D model from Maya or another 3D software, I don't render it out as one layer with all the detail details of the spaceship, but I render it out separately so that I have the color of the spaceship in one layer. And then I have the specular, the, the, um, the shiny, bright points of the metallic surfaces and so on. I have them separately. I have the, uh, the shadows on a separate layer and so on. Because then in compositing, when I combine all these layers, I can adjust these very, very, uh, with a high degree of control. I can make the shadows uh, darker, brighter. I can make the speculars uh, more shiny or whatever. And of course, I can control this in the, in the uh, 3D software, in Maya, for example. But it takes lots of time. And uh, it is much more easy to control it in compositing. And to, uh, you can make last minute changes also. Sound effects is uh, very good at uh, making uh, uh, com uh, visual effects work. If you have a 3D animated uh, dinosaur that is walking around, then of course the sound of the footsteps uh, add to the realism uh, and convey the audience or, or yeah, make the audience believe. In the, in the effect. Very often you use mixed methods. Uh, it is easy to believe that in all movies there is lots of uh, computer graphics. Everything is computer graphics. But as I said before, uh, it's not only 3D uh, graphics. You can have 2D graphics and 2D and a half. And, uh, and uh, it is quite common still to have uh, actual uh, special effects and uh, to have props uh, on location when you shoot also. And for example, it's very common if you have an explosion, for example, uh, it is very common that they shoot an explosion uh, photographically uh, for real as a special effect, but then in post-production they enhance the explosion, uh, put in more debris, brighten up the color of the fireball and so on. So it's a mix of methods to make it look good. 
And then finally camera shake, as I said uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, adding camera movement after the compositing makes it more convincing because when you see the uh, added stuff, the computer graphics move together with the photographic part of the image, then the, the brain of course interprets this as if they belong to each other. If we look specifically at uh, 3D graphics, uh, then you could split it up in three things that are important in order to make the 3D graphics uh, pho photorealistic. Of course, you don't always need photorealism, but uh, in this, uh, uh, I, I'm presuming now that you want photorealism. So it is detail in the models. Uh, detailed textures and realistic lighting. If you have high on all those three, you will probably have a quite good result, or, or the chances are increased. The two images that we see here are uh, a 3D model of uh, a video lab, and uh, these images are very low on two things. The, it is not much uh, detail in the model, the textures are very simple, uh, but the lighting is quite okay. So they look quite convincing, even if just one of these three is uh, good. And if all three had been good, then it, of course it would look very good. Uh, the textures are very important. The textures that you put on the 3D model. And uh, you always uh, separate different parts of the texture. So you have a color map, and that is the color of the surface. And you have a specularity map that controls so that different parts of the surface have different shininess to them. Because if you think of a typical uh, metal surface, the specular or the shininess is not the same all across the whole surface. It varies a little bit. And that is very important in order to make it look realistic. Then we have a bump map, and a bump map is uh, a 2D texture that controls uh, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, relief of the surface. So in this case, where I have, have a bump map with lots of uh, small black dots, in rendering they will look like rivets, small, small um, rivets on the surface of this uh, airplane wing. Uh, and this is put together in the 3D software, in Maya for example. And uh, this is the final model that combines the textures uh, on all the parts of the model. 